In the ninth video, we are going to work on the random positioning of the object to be found. Although we could use the same method that we saw in video 4, in which we put the character in one of several pre-established positions, I came up with a more interesting alternative. We are going to make the object appear at some point in any of the following pieces, so whenever we add a new piece, we'll be adding new regions where the object can appear. The latest field is available to test on the website, along with the two scripts we work on in this video. There's a link in the description. If you are interested in following the project, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The idea is as follows. In each piece, we are going to create four empty objects to represent four points A1, A2, B1, and B2. These points will form segments A and B. Using a script, we will ask the piece to give us a random position of one of the segments. The piece will choose a segment, let's suppose B. It will then make a linear interpolation of points B1 and B2 and return one point of the segment. In that position, we will place the pedestal. For the corridor piece, the idea is the same, only that we will make two empty objects considering that point A1 is the same as V1 and A2 is the same as V2. We start by ordering all the pieces that can contain the pedestal and separating them from the pieces that can't. We create a new tag called spawn piece and assign it to all of these objects. Create a new script and name it labyrinth piece. We won't need the star method or the update method, so we remove them. Let's define four game objects to delimit the region in which the pedestal can appear. This will be the points A1, A2, B1, and B2. Let's start with the crossroads piece. We assign the new script to it, create an empty object that will contain the points, and within this we create another empty object that will be the first point A1. In this case, the orthographic camera is more convenient to correctly position the point. We place it at one end of the piece. Point A2 will be located at the opposite end, and point V1 and V2 at the remaining ends. Drag these objects to their respective places in the script in the inspector and apply the changes. Now all the crossroads in the labyrinth have their own points. We do the same thing with the T-shaped piece. For the corridor piece, we create only the points A1 and A2. And in the inspector, we drag them also to the spaces of B1 and B2. This will also be done for the dead end piece. Once all the pieces are ready, we are going to define a public method that will return a three-dimensional vector. We will name it getRandomPosition. Within the method, we define the three-dimensional vector called position, and at the end of the method, we return it. In the middle, we define two equiprobable alternatives using random.value, which returns a random number between 0 and 1, ends included. In the first case, we make a linear interpolation of the position vectors of the objects A1 and A2. In the other case, we interpolate the vectors corresponding to V1 and V2. This is all that the script will contain. With this, we make sure that each piece knows where the pedestal can be placed and returns a random position of its inner area if asked. One thing I forgot to do is to check that objects A1, A2, V1, and V2 are at the ground level. If this isn't the case, the pedestal could appear floating in the air. The next thing we're going to do is to work on the game control script that will choose one of the pieces of the labyrinth and place the pedestal where the piece says. We define a string for the tag of the pieces of the labyrinth. We define a game objects array to save the reference of all these pieces. We define a float value for the minimum distance that must exist between the character and the chosen piece. We define a game object for the prefile of the object to find. In our case, we are going to use the pedestal. We define another game object to set the reference of the instance of the previous object. 
because at the end of the game we must destroy it. In the inspector we write the tag name, set the minimum distance to 75 and drag the prefab of the pedestal to its respective space. We don't need the game objects array to appear in the inspector, so I remove the serialized field. In the start game method, immediately after placing the character on the stage, we will find all the pieces of the labyrinth. We are going to define a new method that will randomly choose one of the pieces of the labyrinth, ask for a position and instantiate the pedestal. We will call it place object to find. We make the call in the start game method. Inside the new method, we are going to define a boolean variable to exit a while loop. Then, a labyrinth piece type object to save the reference of the labyrinth piece instance present in the piece we choose. Inside a while loop, we are going to choose a random number between 0 and the number of elements of the game object's array minus 1. We define a game object called piece and use the previous number to select a piece of the array. We ask if the distance between the position of the character and the position of the chosen piece is greater than the minimum distance we write in the inspector. If this is true, we will get from it the reference of the object labyrinth piece that has between its components. And we will assign true to the variable to exit the loop. Outside the loop, we are going to instantiate the object to find. To give it the position, we execute the method getRandomPosition that we defined inside the labyrinth piece and, for the rotation, we use the quaternion identity. Finally, in the endgame method, we destroy the pedestal instance. This concludes the programming part of this video. Let's try the game to see that everything works correctly. Now we are going to create a new object to instantiate the pedestal in the regions outside the labyrinth pieces. We create an empty object, give it the name spawn area and make sure it is at the ground level. I'm going to place it to cover this region here. Inside I will create the four points A1, A2, V1 and V2. With this object I make a prefab. Then assign it the script labyrinth piece and drag the objects to the inspector. I will duplicate this object to cover more regions. I'm currently testing the game to see if the pedestal appears in one of these regions. It took me about 5 minutes to realize that the spawn piece tag wasn't assigned. I'm going to make the gates a little smaller and then make a build. I wasn't able to find the pedestal in time. It probably appeared in this piece here, outside the boundaries of the stage. This situation shouldn't happen, so I take out the spawn piece tag and remove the labyrinth piece script. That's it for now. In the next video, we are going to use this system to place in the stage several clocks that the character will be able to collect to have more time.